Yo, what's poppin'? There's a lot of new people that come in, and this is a really common question that they ask, and that is basically what's worth it in the Crown Store? What is a purchase that I won't regret making? So this was an interesting, kind of funny post that came up where we're talking about today which purchases we regret the most, right? So let's just hop into it. And I'll, I'm actually, during this video, I want to read through some of these comments because some of them are funny. There's some good advice in here, but we are going to transition over to actually looking at the game. And I want to go through the Crown Store, and I want to actually tell you guys specifically what um, is worth it, what's kind of predatory, why I disagree with the monetization practices that ZeniMax employs. But also to remind everybody that even though I get annoyed about this and other people get annoyed about this, the developers are not the ones that actually have any say in this. You've got the high ups, the, the executives, the finance department, all that stuff, right? the billing department, whatever. They're making the decisions. The executives are trying to, you know, appease the shareholders and the investors and all of that stuff. And so they're basically coming down, looking at Rich and Matt and saying, hey, this needs to be in the game. We need you guys to generate sales in this way. And they're clearly asking for a lot based on how much and how many different monetization practices that they employ. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it and read some of these comments. The Nord armor motif. Oh my God. Didn't realize how the crafting worked at console launch. So for those of you guys that don't know, the racial motifs for each one, the original one, it's a blue quality motif. Like you can buy from a guild trader for quite literally like 400 gold, 300 gold. You find them all the time. You search any urn, anything in their respective areas. These drop like candy and this person spent real money on them. That's crazy. Um, I've bought some shitty mounts for 5,000 crowns. So for those of you guys that don't know kind of how the monetization works, essentially you want to divide by um, 100, okay? So 5,000 crowns you can think of in your mind as like 50 bucks, even though it's really, it's 39.99 for 5,500 crowns. That's generally kind of how you want to do it. So like obviously the more you get, because they want you to buy more, the bigger discount you get. So if you buy 3,000 crowns, it's $29.99. So that's $30. It works like that. You go to 5,500, you get a little discount. And it's $40 instead of 55, right? Then you can go up to, what, 11,000? And then you can go to 21,000. 21,000 crowns is $149.99, okay? Crazy, crazy. So this person got a crappy mount for $39.99, basically. 5K crowns. Now... What are the ways you can get crowns? There's three ways. Number one, if you're subscribed to ESO Plus, depending on how often you are actually subscribed, meaning monthly, every three months, every six months, I forget what the, the plans are. There's a yearly one that I do just because I know I'm gonna be playing this full time, obviously. Um, so you get crowns, like a, an allowance from that. You can purchase crowns directly with real money or through, uh, Discord servers and stuff like that that are very reputable and very safe. Um, you can actually spend gold to buy crowns where you basically give a player gold and then they purchase something in the crown store for you and gift it to you. But you cannot directly buy crowns. You're basically buying the ability of somebody to gift you something, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Now, the reason that this is crazy to me is because you can get the base game, which has hundreds and hundreds of hours, tons of earnable content that's basic, given there's not a lot of mounts that you can earn in ESO, and that is improving. The last six months to a year have been much better. We've started getting earnable mounts a little bit more often outside of events, which is still, um, you know, you can still buy that with real money. So I, I don't really count that in my brain, but um, the base game often is on sale for less than $20, and this guy is paying basically 50 bucks over double the price of the base game for one mount one mount crazy all right 200 dollars worth of crown crates in like three days so the next thing if y'all don't know what crown crates are these are eso's predatory gambling loot boxes so you have different tiers of rewards um, we've done a video on this we've talked about this several times but the the top tier is called radiant apex there's three very very cool flashy mounts if you're not a fan of like super high over the top fantasy and crazy animations and stuff like that, you're not gonna like it. Like if you like the more traditional kind of fantasy or medieval looks, 
you won't like that stuff, but a lot of MMO players tend to like cool looking stuff like that, right? All of those cost upwards of hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get because you're the rate of those actually dropping in the crates are extremely low. Now there is a fail safe system where they've implemented something called crown gems. So if you get duplicates, um, you eventually get crown gems. You can deconstruct certain things that you don't want. But if you like, for instance, if you get a, a style page or, um, you know, not even a style page, a, if you get like a costume, if you get any sort of appearance item that you don't want, but you didn't have, it automatically goes in. So you cannot exchange that for crown gems, which sucks. Same with mounts. Like if you were looking for like an apex mount and you really wanted the bear, but you accidentally got the camel, it doesn't matter. You can't trade it. So I always tell everybody possible. Cooper's just staring at the camera. What are you looking at, bub? Um, but basically like I tell everybody not to get these because you are absolutely going to lose money on these 1 million percent. They are not worth it. And it's a huge, huge, huge waste of money. The drop rate is like under 0.1%. I mean, it's ridiculous. So you have a one in 1000 chance just with a 0.1% chance. Like, are you kidding me? No. So anyways, there's lots of things that you can buy that are going to ruin your day basically. So I do want to go over and make a make a point of this and kind of just go through the crown store and tell y'all what is objectively in my mind useful for you and totally worth doing um and also i want to tell you what's what's predatory and then kind of some of the subjective things that maybe you know if you like it you like it and it's great it's your money you do whatever you want but there's certain things in there that you should not get straight up okay so let's go ahead and excuse me pop on over to the game so we'll hop in the crown store here and we're just going to go piece by piece here. So after featured. So ESO Plus specifically, if you have this, you're going to get discounts like this every once in a while. So you'll see the normal price on the left for 15 crown crates is 5,000 crowns. If you're with ESO Plus, you get 3,500 crowns for this. There are ESO Plus deals throughout the year. There's also going to be three times during the year where there is a massive sale on crowns. We have one coming up. It's the same time every year. It's during the anniversary Jubilee event. You have another one that's in the fall around QuakeCon, and then you have one kind of close to the holidays and stuff, I believe. I'm kind of blanking on the third one, but there are three times during the year where that happens. And then on top of that, a lot of times, not even the ESO Plus exclusives like this, but you'll just have a straight up discount on some items for everybody across the board. So let me see if there's any discounts right now. It doesn't look like it, but you'll see like minus 10%, minus 20%, whatever, okay? So let's go ahead and go over to special offers. So I've had these since the very beginning. Um, and I will straight up tell you, the only thing in here that I think is, is fine is if, if you're going to PVP in this game, before you get this any race, any alliance bundle, each alliance has three races that are tied to it no matter what, right? So like the Ebonheart pack, for, for instance, has Nords, Argonians, and Dark Elves. Now, if you like one of those three races, but all of your friends are on the Daggerfall Covenant, you can't do that. You can't be in the Daggerfall Covenant as a Nord without this any race, any alliance bundle. So I bought that for that reason. I loved Nords, I still do. And so I made, in the beginning, I made a Nord Dragon Knight, it was like one of my first characters. And I really wanted to play with my friends that are, were on DC, so I got this bundle so I could do that. So to me, that was worth it, right? Now, this starter pack, and the starter pack adept, these are all, every single one of these minus this little pet, every single one of these things you get as daily rewards. Now, back when I got this, I don't think we had daily rewards yet. And so I reasoned with myself, I was like, the crown repair kits, like, eh, but you get some little XP scrolls and a pet. So I, for some reason, I had extra crowns laying over. It was 500 crowns, not a big deal, right? Same with the starter pack to adept. You do get some costumes. You got some of these riding lessons, which were very useful at the time but again unless you really are dying to get this white mane horse which is not that great um i would advise against any of this stuff same with this this is literally just a mountain furnishing bundle i always say not to get these crown crates okay so you can see the different tiers here you've got the radiant apex rewards you've got apex right and the one thing that has gotten really annoying so you'll see this section here is called legendary and you'd get a decent amount of legendary um, tiered items every time you open it. Like, it's exciting. It's great. 
they used to have costumes, this sweet roll, like, you know, skins, stuff like that used to be in Legendary. They recently just moved them up to Apex to even lessen, even more, the chance of you getting one of these Apex mounts, right? So they have made it even more difficult to get these mounts. So these are completely predatory, completely. And one of the things that happened during, I forget how long ago this was, but when Microsoft acquired ZeniMax, one of the things that they had along with their company, it was, in, it was one of their company policies, was that you had to be able to earn everything. Basically, if, if there's a gambling system like this, you have to be able to earn that stuff as well. And so they implemented something called Seals of Endeavor. Seals of Endeavor is a system that you can come down here every day, you will have Endeavor. So you'll have these five Endeavors, you can create or you can complete a maximum of three of these per day. So I'll get 30 Endeavor, Seals of Endeavor today. You also can complete one of the three weekly Endeavors per week. So I get 250 from this. So if on average I'm getting 30 per day, I get 210 from the week, right? And then I also get 250 from this. So you get 460 seals of endeavor for the entire week. Okay. Now the mounts that everybody wants, like I said, are the radiant apex mounts. These guys, this is one of them. It's very flashy. You may not, you know, it may not be your cup of tea, but it's something that a lot of people like. It's something that a lot of people enjoy. This is another one of them, the Solstheim Shiver Wolf. They look pretty cool. They put a lot of effort into the textures, into the animations. Like, it's a cool mount. Um, I think this elk is probably the best one. It's got a really cool um, summon animation. Uh, my guy's all jacked up on how he's riding him, of course. That makes total sense. But anyways, so those are kind of like the big ticket items, right? So the thing is, you come over to the Seals of Endeavor store. This allows you to buy anything from the crown crates. There's 16,000 for one. So it is physically impossible. If you log in every day, you do all of your daily endeavors, you do all of your weekly endeavors, you are unable to earn any of these Radiant Apex mounts during one crown crate season. It's physically impossible. It's physically impossible. And they know that. So you can do this basically once every eight to nine months, you're able to afford one of these. If you do it every single day and don't miss a day. So while this system is here, and yes, you technically are able to earn something, right? You're able to earn these by law, right? You're able to actually earn them. In reality, we as the players know, like this is just a system to get around that policy. This is not something feasible where we're able to use this as a system and once per crown crate season, we can get a really cool mount. That's not what it is. It's basically once a year, you can get a really cool mount like this, basically. There are some people, obviously with the math, it'll end up being there will be times where you can get it like once every or two, like two per year or something like that. But this is, it's just a janky system. And I, it, I think it's extremely predatory. It's gambling. So a lot of people like that guy spent $200 in three days on this. Like you just lose a lot of money. I always say, do not get these. I had extra crown gems because we had a week long of crown crates that we got as rewards. And so I'll buy stuff with crown gems once we get them you know, if we get crown crates and the daily rewards, that's what I get my crown gems from, okay? DLC, if you are not using ESO Plus, then obviously you would buy these, and I think that's fine. Quest starters, this is just a, a section to get quests. Upgrades, I, the armory slots, if you really want to, you can get these, but I will say it is extremely, extremely cheap of them to do this, but this is per character. So if you go in here and you spend $15 buying an armory slot, you are not unlocking an additional slot for your account. You are unlocking one additional armory slot for your character that you're buying it on, which is so dumb. It is so dumb that this is not account wide. And everybody says that. So then what I tend to tell people, unless you really don't want to make another character, um, then go for it. Like if you want to, but, or if you have extra crowns and you're like, I'm not going to spend it. This is the only character I play, whatever, you know? This is one of those subjective things. Like if it's going to make you happier, do it. But it, to me, $15 for one extra build on that character, what happens if the next quarter your build is effectively gone? It just, you know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. This is one of the objective things that I think is genuinely useful. Okay. And it is the assistance. You have merchant assistance that you can pull out anywhere in the world. You put it on a quick slot wheel, pull out a merchant 
pull out a banker. The rag picker is somebody that you can deconstruct all of your items, all your armor, your enchants, whatever, your glyphs, and do that. Um, you've got an armory assistant, so you don't have to interact with the free armory station that we can get as a furnishing. You can pull out this assistant and change your build if you want to. This is very useful for people on console, not as much for us on, on PC because we have add-ons like, you know, Wizard's Wardrobe where you can just click a button and it puts on a build, right? So... I got a bundle or something one time, and that's why I have it, but you really don't need it. The additional character slots, if you're an altaholic, I think it's great. Subjective, I don't really think I need it or want it. Collector's edition, subjective. Bag space upgrades, I think that they're genuinely useful because I think having more inventory space is fantastic. Um, ouch. Um, if you have the extra crowns, but these are not post paying for them with gold. You can go to a pack merchant and you can purchase bag space upgrades with gold, right? So I wouldn't do this. So you get up to 80 extra slots from purchasing them directly from a pack merchant in game. Same with the banker here, right? So I wouldn't buy this with crowns unless you genuinely just don't care and don't have any reason to spend crowns other than this. These pets are cool because each of these pets are five extra slots and inventory is a huge thing in ESO, so that's why. Um, you'll see people with like 200 inventory slots, right? And you start out with, I, I'm blanking on exactly what it is, like 70, I think, or 60. And then you go up to 140, and then you get 60 from the riding capacity with your mount, right? So you can get up to 215 by buying these three, these three pets. The outfit slot is the exact same thing as the armory, right? The outfit slots is a per character basis. This is beyond stupid. It's just Zoss trying to make money off of you, especially for people that don't know any better. Do not buy this unless you just are like a fashion person and you have all this extra money or all these extra crowns, like whatever. But I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it. The crown riding lessons. Um, again, this is a per character basis. This would be a totally different story if you didn't get these as daily rewards and if this was account wide. You get these as daily rewards all the time, so I don't think it's worth it. The tokens, obviously, I think they're grossly overpriced. I think you changing your alliance for $25, more than the price of the game, is insane. I think changing your race and it costing $30 is insane. Um, now, this is where we kind of get into the whole system of, um, if you hate it, then get this, you know? So, for instance, if you don't PvP, you got to level 10 PvP on one character, you've unlocked this skill line skip. And if you're like, I never want to touch PvP again, then this is worth it for you. If you have, you know, the extra crowns, and if you have a tank or a support player or a character, and you want to get the, you know, the ultimates and stuff like that. I am this way with Antiquities. I think Antiquities in here, there's a few of them, but Antiquities... Sigic and Ledger Domain, I do not enjoy leveling at all. I think it actively was made in a certain way to be terrible to level, to be an absolute drag, to be painful to drive players to the store. Because I refuse to level up Antiquities ever again. I've done it on three characters, and it is mind-numbingly boring. I think every single person should do it once. I think that's fine. But stuff like this, there's no reason this can't be account wide. This is not crafting. We've already done all the quests on one of our characters. We've already done all of this. I think once you get to max level, it should be an achievement that unlocks it for all of your characters. I don't think that they're gonna do that, but I think the same thing for um, like Dark Brotherhood. I think the same thing for Ledger Domain, Sigic, Mage's Guild, like all that stuff I think should be soul magic. Like it's just, it's not fun to level up again. Undaunted, you're just gonna do it so passively from running dungeons and stuff that it's not a big deal if you pvp all the time it's the same thing for the alliance war soul magic just do the main story and it maxes it out and it takes like literally less than half a day to do that um the biggest thing that you should never 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 do is purchase a werewolf spite or purchase a curse of vampirism from the store a player literally any zone go to any zone and say can i can a vampire bite me can a werewolf bite me you will group up you go to a shrine, you know, respective to vampirism or werewolf, it's free. Do not buy this. It's $15. It's more than the price of the game. This is predatory on new players that don't know any better. Do not buy this. The same thing goes 
for the cure. You can go to various people in different towns. There are specific NPCs. You can look them up. They cure this for like a hundred gold. Like it's like, it's nothing. It is nothing. Do not buy this. Do not buy this. Sky shards. If you are not a sky shard hunter, if you think it's miserable, then you can buy them and that's fine. There are certain zones where I don't want to do them ever again. I don't want to ever get the Cyrodiil sky shards ever again. I don't ever want to get the Imperial City Sky Shards ever again. I don't PvP. It's not something I enjoy in this game. I used to all the time. It is extremely dry to me now. I just, they haven't implemented anything new. They haven't, like, there's no reason to PvP. There's no rewards. There's no reason for me to do it. And that's just, that's just me being frank with you guys. That's, a, that's the reason a lot of PvP players have left because it has not been reliably updated. And I'm not talking about builds. I'm not talking about server stability. I mean, the content that you do for PvP has not been updated since, what, when Battlegrounds were introduced or when Volendrung was introduced, which didn't change literally anything. So, you know, that's why I, all this other stuff, if you're a completionist like me, I just do this along the way and it's not a big deal and I think it's a waste of money, but you could enjoy it. These are a waste. These are a waste. These are also all a waste. Never buy these. The Pledge of Mars is a little bit different. Um, if you and your wife, your husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, best friend play together all the time, this can be nice because you get like a little extra 10% boost um, to XP. But like all these other things, you get these as daily rewards. Like you, you do not need to buy these. Do not buy these in the store either. The attribute and skill respect scrolls. You will get these as daily rewards. You will get these for leveling up to level 50. And there are shrines that allow you to, to do this in game for minimal money. Do not buy it. These all are daily rewards. Never, ever, ever, ever buy these. These are all daily rewards. Never buy them, okay? There's also stuff in game that does the exact same thing as these, right? Houses, subjective. I'm not into housing. If you like housing, that's great, but you will never catch me spending $100 on a virtual house in a game. Um, I, the prices of homes in this game is absurd. Now, a lot of these you can buy unfurnished with gold. That's great. That's a great gold sink, right? That is a great gold sink. I would never, ever, ever, ever pay for the, the cost of homes in this game. Look at these, the big houses, 11,000, 13,000, 12,000. I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy, the pricing in this game. Furniture, it's the same thing. You might like the house guests. This is subjective. I'm not going to say anything on that. Style Parlor, we need a freaking barbershop in this game. This is stupid. The fact that you have to pay real money to get cosmetics like this on your character, not saying that I want these or that these are exciting by any means, but at the end of the day, it's ridiculous. We need to have an in-game barbershop. This needs to all be free. No other, I, I can't think of another game that does this, honestly. If you wanna change the way your character's face looks, and do a full-blown appearance change, or go from male to female, female to male, like whatever, that's different, I guess, but your facial hair and your hair? Come on. Okay. Um, Crown Mimic Stones, these are daily rewards. Same thing with, um, with research. I think this is a waste of money. Just wait it out. It's free. Not a big deal. Um, these, I've never been a fan that you can buy in-game cosmetics like this with real money. I think you being able to trade them in the game is totally different. If you, for instance... Let's come over to, let's see. Let's do this. Hazardous Alchemy. Okay. Cool style, right? Very cool. You can run Stone Garden on Vet. You, have, you even have a chance to earn these on Normal. And you can farm these. You can also purchase them from Guild Traders, right? I would not buy these in a million years. 50 bucks for one motif book. That's insane. The other thing, too, is... This completely negates the excitement to me or the cool factor of people having this stuff in the game, right? So if I see somebody that looks cool, for instance, this guy, you don't know, like, when I look at somebody in a different game, like if I go to World of Warcraft or if I go to Final Fantasy, when I look at people and they look cool, I say, what did they do to get that? That is so cool. What activity did they overcome? What did they do to get that? That is so impressive. In ESO, most of the time, a vast majority of the time, you will say, 
how much gold did they spend to get that or how much like real life money did they spend to get that style most people like you just don't have you just you'll never know right the reason that i wear stuff like what i'm wearing this is the class set style from infinite archive you cannot trade this with other players you cannot buy it with real money if you look at my character you know i grinded my ass off in infinite archive to earn this i think that old style of thinking from MMOs back in the early 2000s, that's what I want in this. I want to be able to earn stuff. Now, there's a lot of people that say, well, you know, I should, like, it, there's certain, like, activities that I'm just unable to do. That's okay. We're not supposed to be able to do every single thing in an MMO. There's a lot of people that come to ESO and they treat it like a single player RPG and they want to be able to get everything because they paid for the game, right? In an MMORPG, in my mind, there are certain things you have to earn, right? I, in my mind, don't think I will ever get God Slayer. I won't ever have that mount because I don't have the time nor desire to dedicate that much time to progressing a end game high end trifecta for a vet trial with 11 other people. I just, I, I don't have it in me. I like the small group activities. I think the trials and the raids in this game are great, right? but I just don't care that much. I'm okay with that. I didn't do that activity, so I shouldn't get that mount. I shouldn't get the God Slayer title. That doesn't make sense, right? So I just, this completely negates, one of the biggest rewards from doing difficult dungeon content is getting style pages, cosmetics, and the fact that you can buy all of them ruins it for me. So if you are the type of person that says, I don't want to do that. I don't have time for that. I have a lot more disposable income than I used to when I was a kid, and I want to spend it on what I want to spend it on. Tear it up, dude. Don't care. That's great. That's great. You spend your own money however you want, whatever makes you guys happy. But I don't think this is worth it because you can get it in the game. You can also spend a lot of time learning how to make gold and never run this content and buy it with gold, right? So I like the game stuff. I like that we can earn it in one way or another whether it's from doing the content or gold. But I do not like paying real money for this stuff. This is not a free-to-play game. I don't think we should have the extent of cosmetics in the shop that we do in ESO. There are also lots of cosmetics that are only from the shop and that you cannot earn in-game, and I don't like that either. So that's just me. Next, we have customized actions. When this was first announced, I think a lot of people were very excited. So it basically changes the way you do stuff. So like I'm mining, but I'm doing it with a, a stone sledgehammer. I've got the Karth River Cleave. It adds effects and it adds very cool animations to you gathering to spice it up. Like it's, it's cool. You've got the different colored recalls. So instead of blue, you've got yellow. And in crown crates, of course, they do the coolest ones because they want you to buy crown crates. So here's the, frost, the Frostfall recall. So if you want to teleport, this is your animation now. It's very cool. Especially if you have like an Ice Mage build, an Ice Warden, whatever. That's very cool. It's very thematic. It's RP friendly. But you have to spend real money on it. This is something that we could have earned in game that would have been very exciting. But they chose to monetize it. Now, this is why I think a lot of people are pretty excited about styling in Gold Road. Because styling is changing the way that your abilities look. And it opens the door to allow them to add pet skins for things like the Warden Bear, the Minions for Necromancer... The, um, the Matriarch, the Clan Fear, and the Scamp for the Sorcerer. It allows you to have pet skins, and they said it's actually going to be earnable in-game. And something to keep in mind with Elder Scrolls Online is they have never monetized aspects of a chapter's feature, right? So in High Isle, a lot of people were worried that with Tales of Tribute that they were going to monetize decks. They've never done that, and they won't do that, right? Same thing with any chapter feature that's coming out. So styling and scribing will not be monetized as of right now. Not saying that can't change, everything can change, right? But the, the thing that is exciting a lot of people about styling is we can earn this in game. You are giving us rewards. That is a reward for gameplay. We currently are severely, severely lacking rewards for long-term gameplay. There is not a lot of incentivization to play the game. Fun is a great incentive but it doesn't last you 10 years, right? There's a reason that people play MMOs and repeat the same content over and over and over again, boost your player numbers, 
and play for a very long time and it is incentive and reward and there is a very very massive lack of incentivization rewards in ESO. It is improving, but it has not been there for a while. ESO is very good at bringing in new players. It's been very bad historically at keeping core players, veteran players, end game players, PVP players, you name it, right? So yeah. So this was a missed opportunity. Customized actions. This would have been a great thing to tie to achievements, right? Next, we've got wardrobe. So wardrobe Unlike motifs that are added on as like an outfit where you can customize the hands individually, the chest, the helmet, all of that, this involves costumes. So these are paid cosmetic costumes. The, the difference between a costume and an outfit is that costumes completely cover everything underneath. So if I throw on this gown and I had a guild tabard underneath this, I could still represent the guild without seeing the guild tabard. So you have all these different costumes. This is subjective. If you like this kind of stuff, Tear it up, go for it, right? There's some really cool ones that come out sometimes, but it's whatever you do you, boo-boo. These are a waste. You get tons of dyes in the game, never buy these. I know they're super cheap, but don't buy them. Mounts, it's very sad. We started getting in-game earnable mounts. So to get this ink for Ursoc, you had to do the Kingmaker achievement in Rothgar, which involved you basically finishing up the main storyline for Rothgar. That's great. That's very exciting. This was free. You could do that. It's a great mount. It's more recent. It's a heavyweight reskin mount, but it's still great. It's free, right? We earned it. These other mounts, 95%, and that is a actual number, 95% of ESO's mounts that have been released over the game are only purchasable with real money. Meaning crowns. Like you can't buy them directly with gold. You can't earn them, right? Now, like I said earlier, you can convert gold to crowns, right? But that is not something inherently done by the game. Like, I can't go do an achievement in, in Raw Ka or Reaper's March and earn the Central INS. I can't go to Shadowfen and earn the Tessellated Guard. Now, you'll see I've purchased a lot of these because I support the game. I like mounts. Mounts are one of my favorite things in the game that you know, that are, are great chase items. I've spent 5,000 crowns. Like, I save up my ESO plus crowns to skip the BS skill lines like antiquities and stuff, and I also use it on this stuff, right? But at the end of the day, this stuff needs to be earned in game. This stuff needs to be a rewarding game. That's one of the biggest chase items outside of cosmetics. Mounts are one of the biggest chase items in an MMO, and you start adding this to actual in-game rewards and see how many people flock in. Same with pets. I personally don't care about pets, but it, it's the same thing. I have you have the ability now in ESO to favorite all of the um, your favorite things. So all the ones that I have favorited are ones that I have earned in all of this. These are all things that I've gotten for free or that I have earned in some way, right? And I think that's great. And that's kind of what I look for when I'm looking at this stuff. These are all mounts that I have directly earned. Now, if I get something with Seals of Endeavor, if you see like a crown sword mount on here, it's because I got it with Seals of Endeavor, right? And I did not pay real money for it, whether it's the collector's edition, whether it's blah, blah, blah. There's not a lot of mounts in this game that you can earn, right? So that's pretty much everything. Like I said, like the most beneficial things, like just objectively for you are going to be the assistants. Outside of that, if you want to skip some of the skill lines because they're a drag and you don't enjoy leveling that, then I think that's great. And you should skip it. But it's always going to be up to you. It is your money. You guys are adults. You do whatever you want. But please watch out for some of the predatory crown store items in there. Tell your friends, tell the new players not to buy certain things and help everybody avoid crown crates. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know down below what you think was your worst purchase ever and let me know your opinions on the monetization of ESO. I hope it changes one day. Um, I don't think it will. I'm not going to be naive in that way. I don't think it will change, but I hope it does. And if anyone at Zoss is watching this, Please think about it, seriously. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe for more of this daily ESO content, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.